Let me ask, uh, you kind of uh, took a step back to the genome outside of just humans, but is there something that you find beautiful about the human genome specifically? So I think the genome, if more people understood the beauty of the human genome, they would be so many fewer wars, so much less anger in the world. I mean, what's really beautiful about the human genome is really the variation that teaches us both about individuality and about similarity. So any two people on the planet are 99.9% .9 identical. How can you fight with someone who's 99.9% .9 identical to you? It's just counterintuitive. And yet, any two siblings of the same parent differ in millions of locations. So every one of them is basically two to the million unique from any pair of parents, let alone any two random parents on the planet. Mm. So that's, I think, something that teaches us about sort of the nature of humanity in many ways, that every one of us is as unique as any star and way more unique in actually in many ways. And uh, yet we're all brothers and sisters and- Yeah, just like stars, most of it is just uh, fusion uh, reactions. Yeah, you only have a few parameters <laughs> to describe stars. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, mass, size, initial size, and you know, stage of life. Whereas for humans, it's, you know, thousands of parameters scattered across our genome. So the other thing that makes humans unique, the other things that makes inheritance unique in humans is that uh, most species inherit things vertically. Basically, instinct is a huge part of their behavior. The way that, you know, I mean, with my kids, we've been watching this uh, nest of birds uh, with two little eggs, you know, out, outside our window for the last few months, uh, for the last few weeks as, they, as they've been growing. And there's so much behavior that's hard-coded. Birds don't just learn as they grow, they don't, you know, there's no culture. Like a bird that's born in Boston will be the same as a bird that's born in California. So there's not as much um, inheritance of ideas, of customs. A lot of it is hard-coded in their genome. What's really beautiful about the human genome is that if you take a person from today and you place them back in ancient Egypt, or if you take a person from ancient Egypt and you pl place them here today, they will grow up to be completely normal. That is not genetics. This is the other type of inheritance in humans. So on one hand, we have the genetic inheritance, which is vertical from your parents down. On the other hand, we have horizontal inheritance, which is the ideas that are built up at every generation are horizontally transmitted. And the huge amount of time that we spend in educating ourselves, a concept known as neoteny, Neo for newborn and then tenny for holding. So if you look at humans, I mean, the, the little birds that were, you know, eggs two weeks ago, and that, now one of them has already flown off, the other one's ready to fly off. In two weeks, they're ready to just fend for themselves. Humans, 16 years, <laughs> 18 years, 24, getting out of yeah, college. I'm still learning. <laughs> so so that's so fascinating, the, this uh, picture of a vertical and the horizontal. I, when you talk about the horizontal, is it in the realm of ideas? Exactly. Okay, exactly. so it's, in, it's the actual social interactions. And, that's exactly right, like, that's okay. exactly right. So basically the concept of neoteny is that you spend acquiring characteristics from your environment in an extremely malleable state of your brain and the wiring of your brain for a long period of your life. Compared to primates, we are useless. You take any primate at seven weeks and any human at seven weeks, we lose the battle. But at 18 years, you know, all bets are off. Like we basically, our brain continues to develop in an extremely malleable form till very late. And this is what allows education. This is what allows the person from Egypt to do extremely well now. And the reason for that is that the wiring of our brain and the development of that wiring is actually delayed. So, you know, the longer you delay that, the more opportunity you have to pass on knowledge, to pass on concepts, ideals, ideas from the parents to the child. And what's really absolutely beautiful about humans today is that that lateral transfer of ideas and culture is not just from uncles and aunts and teachers at school, but it's from Wikipedia and review articles on the web and thousands of journals that are sort of putting out information for free. 
and podcasts and video casts and all of that stuff, where you can basically learn about any topic, pretty much everything that would be in any super advanced textbook in a matter of days, instead of having to go to the library of Alexandria and sail there to read three books and then sail for another few days to get to Athens and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the democratization of knowledge and the spread, the speed of spread of knowledge is what defines, I think, the human inheritance pattern.